Hi everybody, Mr. Colella here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about volume of prisms. Now you did this last year in sixth grade. You talked about rectangular prisms last year. You probably hopefully remember that. We're going to kind of just build on that a little bit. We're going to also talk about triangular prisms as well as cylinders. Uh, I know cylinder doesn't have the word prism in it. Um, I guess a cylinder would technically be a circular prism. We don't call it that. You can think about it that way if it helps you, but a cylinder is a type of prism. So we're going to focus on uh, rectangular prisms, triangular prisms, and cylinders. There are other kinds. We're not going to worry about them right now. So focusing on just these three this week. First of all, we're going to use a formula. Now, I did put the reference sheet with all the formulas. I put a link um, to it on each of the Google Classroom pages, so you can go ahead and download it there if you haven't already. Um, but this is the formula we're going to use for all prisms, and it's volume equals capital B times H. Uh, it's very important to think of this as capital B. Uh, I'll talk about why in a minute. But it's uh, the, the idea of having it be capital B is kind of what makes all of this work for all prisms. Another note for prisms down here at the bottom, remember that volume's always given in cubic units. So just as an example, whatever the unit for your problem happens to be, you would give that as cubed. So inches cubed, centimeters cubed, feet cubed, etc. Okay, let's take a quick look at uh, rectangular prisms to start. Now I have two formulas here. One of them on the right that's that capital B times H that I mentioned a minute ago. The other is what you hopefully remember from last year, length times width times height. Now, technically, these are the same thing. Okay, and I want you to understand that. So last year, you used the length times width times height. We want to kind of transition your thinking to the capital B times H because capital B times H will work for the triangular prisms, the cylinders, and all other prisms where length times width times height will not. Length times width times height only works for rectangular. Now, I want you to notice there is an H at the end of both formulas. So that technically shows us that the LW and the capital B are really the same thing. So what I want you to start doing is I want you to start thinking of capital B as actually the area of what we call the base shape. Okay, so if you think about it, L times W... L times W, that is how we find the area of a rectangle. I would hope it makes sense to you that the base shape of a rectangular prism is a rectangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about this right here on the end of the prism as the base shape. So when we say capital B, capital B is simply the area of that base shape. So you're finding the area of that rectangle and then you're multiplying it by this height right here. That's technically the same thing as length times width times height. So let's just show you what that looks like quickly here for rectangular prisms. Let me get this stuff out of the way. If I were to simply do length times width times height, let's do that first. I'll put some measurements on here. Let's call this uh, six inches down at the bottom. We'll call this guy right here. We'll call that three inches. And this right here, we're going to call that 10 inches. So if I were to do length times width times height, I would simply plug in 6 times 3 times 10. 6 times 3 is 18. And then I would multiply that by 10. And 18 times 10 is obviously 180. And I would label it inches cubed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing on the right with capital B times H. And I want you to, again, remember capital B is just the area of the base shape. So the base shape being the rectangle. So just going to kind of highlight that for you in a different color. I'm going to find the area of that, which is 6 times 3, or 18. And then I have to multiply it by the H, the height of the prism, which is 10. 
So I want you to notice this and this, they're exactly the same thing, right? So we're getting the same answer. So I'm going to end up with volume still is 180 inches cubed or cubic inches. Same exact thing. The height is always going to be whatever connects the base shape to the identical base shape on the other side. Okay, so you can should hopefully see that this this right here, this 10 inches, is what connects the rectangle on this end to the rectangle on the other end. Okay, so again, capital B times H is what we're going to try and do here. We're going to see what that looks like with some different prisms. Here is a triangular prism. So again, we want to think about the base shape. Now a base shape of a triangular prism should hopefully be pretty obvious that it's a triangle. So we're going to look at this triangle right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have that triangle and then we're going to have a height. The height is what connects that base to this identical base on the other side. Okay? So Let's see what that looks like. So we have, uh, let's put some measurements on there. All right, we're gonna say, let's call this, I don't know, six, we'll use centimeters this time. Six centimeters on the bottom. Now remember when you're finding area of a triangle, you need the height of the triangle. So let's put a, give, give you a height there. And let's label that maybe eight centimeters. And we will label this uh, height of the prism. We'll call that, I don't know, let's call it 20, 20 centimeters. Now, it gets a little confusing sometimes because we have a height of a triangle. We also have the height of a prism. Try not to confuse those two things, if at all possible. So what we're going to do is first let's find the area of the triangle. So for a triangle, you're going to do area equals one half of the base times the height. So my base of this triangle is 6, and my height of this triangle right here is 8. So I'm just going to fill those things in. So I'm going to say 1 half of 6 times 8. 6 times 8 is 48, and a half of that is 24. So the area of that triangle is 24. So when I go to find volume, capital B is going to be 24, because remember, capital B is the area of the base shape. In this case, my base shape is a triangle, that triangle. So capital B in this case is 24. The height is what connects that triangle to the identical triangle on the other side. That's 20. 24 times 20 is 480. And I always want to label, so in this case it's centimeters cubed. So again, you're just finding the area of the base shape. Remember, this base shape is a triangle. Find that area, multiply by the height. Capital B is always the area of the base shape. Now, triangles are a little tricky because tr not all triangular prisms really look alike. Um, make sure you're always identifying what the base is properly. Now in this one on the left that we just looked at, it's, the same, it's identical to the one we just used in the problem, this is the base shape. And hopefully you notice that the base shape always has an identical on the other end. So that's it. On this one on the right, here is your triangle. That's your base. Okay, so it always looks slightly different depending on how they set up the triangular prism. So don't get don't get confused by that. Um, last one that we want to look at here is a cylinder. A cylinder, the base shape is always a circle. You should, I would hope, see this circle on the end. Obviously, you could use the circle on the top or the circle on the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Um, let's put some some measurements in here. So uh, remember, if, if we're doing a circle, we need a radius. Now let's call the radius, let's call it 4. And let's see, we've used inches, we've used centimeters. Let's use meters here. So we're going to say 4 meters. Uh, and we're going to need a height. Now remember, the height is always what connects 
the two identical bases. So here's a circle. We have an identical circle on the bottom. So this has to be the height because it connects those two circles. So our height is right here. And let's call that maybe 12 meters. Okay. So if I, if I want to do this, uh, again, the base of this is a circle. So my first step is to find the area of that circle. Now, circles have an a uh, area formula of uh, pi r squared, if you should hopefully remember that from earlier this week. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the area of that circle is pi r squared. Um, the radius, the r there is 4, so that's going to be pi times 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, so I'm doing pi times 16. Pi times 16 is 50.24. So when I go to finish this problem, 50.24 is the area of the circle. The area of the circle is the capital B in this case. So I'm doing 50.24 times the height. Now remember the height is 12. So 50.24 times 12. Multiply those two numbers and you get 602.88 and this one was meters, so meters cubed. So again, we're using the capital B because we want it to be able to kind of adapt to each different shape. Always identify your base first, whether that be a rectangle, a triangle, or a circle. Capital B will be the area of that base. Okay. After you find the area of that base, you simply are going to multiply it by the height. The height is always the length that connects the two identical bases on either end of the prism. I hope this helps. Good luck this week, uh, and uh, we'll see how it goes.